I, I don't think this is in this is insane. I don't think he's I don't think it's like he's giving terrible advice. He's it's very basic shit. You could find probably all this for free, but it's fine, and it's probably not worth making a video, which you likely will have to title something like "I took Ninja's masterclass and it ruined my life." Every I have never watched this video, but I'm gonna assume it did not ruin his life. I'm assuming this is an exaggeration, but I could be wrong. Let's find out. Everybody keeps saying, Drew, you can't restock your merch. You don't know how. You're too stupid. But guess what, loser? I figured it out. And now you can buy more shirts at DrewGoodShop.com. Hey, guys. Welcome back to another episode of My Brawless Wife Bringing Me a Sandwich I Didn't Ask For. So I made a Twitch account in 2018 with the intention of streaming regularly. Still one of the greatest tweets of all time, the by the way. four years since, I have streamed... One. I keep telling myself I'll go back to it, but as with everything else in life, I remember it's just so much easier not to, so I don't. But today, that all changes. Thank okay, I'm gonna say this real quick. YouTubers who try streaming, and this is not specific to Drew, I've never seen a stream. He said he streamed once. They're usually dog shit streamers. <laughs> They're usually terrible. You ever watch a YouTuber who tries streaming for a bit? I feel like all they know about streaming is like what Uber drivers know about streaming. Oh, is that a website you play video games on? Remember like COVID started and, and David Dobrik tried streaming and he just played like fucking Warzone like with his friends and barely interacted and everyone's like <laughs> like a million like college girls who popped in being like, hey, he was like, I don't care. I'm going to go like three and eight and play Warzone. It's like what is what is, what is going on here? <laughs> this is this sucks. I well, I think a lot of people who you're mentioning are more streamers than YouTubers. C Dog is very much a streamer now. Yeah, Logan Paul, dude, Logan Paul when he started streaming, oh my god, it was cringe. He started streaming and he had a giant wall of plates, and his gimmick was that any time he got a kill or something epic happened when he was playing Fortnite, he would break a plate. And it was like, it, it was so much. It was so extra. Thanks to the help of one man, Tyler Ninja Blevins. If you don't know who Ninja is, he's sort of the Michael Jordan of having blue hair. If you do <laughs> know who Ninja is, you probably expected me to say he's the Michael Jordan of Twitch streaming, but that would imply that he's one of the very best at it. I don't know if that's true. I think at this point, there are tons of people doing an equal or better job of oh representing my God. how fun and exciting. Is he a RuneScape head? Because he just threw an It's Will. I feel like everyone has a secret dark RuneScape past. And it's like something you don't talk about. <laughs> it's something you try to keep on the DL, but everybody has had a dark, dirty RuneScape past. Fighting Twitch can be. Ninja might just be the only streamer that, like, your grandma has heard of because she saw him on Ellen. Since there's such a large portion of the general population that had no idea what a Fortnite stream was when their kids told them it was their new favorite thing to watch, I think someone had to be anointed as, like, the face of it. And Ninja is a high energy guy. He's very good at video games. He made himself super marketable and he used to stream all the time. I will say Ninja is like the Emerald Lagasse of streaming. Emerald Lagasse was never the greatest chef. But to someone who doesn't know about chefs, that got the point across real easy. Which made him constantly accessible. He was Now this is a bit of an older example because nowadays the most popular chef is Gordon Ramsay. But he's also like a good chef so it doesn't play as well. If you don't know, he was like an early 2000s like um, cooking network chef. You say bam a lot. You're too young. It's the right dude in the right moment playing the right game. And to his credit, he totally embraced it. Not everyone in that position would have said yes to as many things as he did. Sometimes it's actually okay not to do everything that's he offered to you. He did do everything, you never bro. know when you might end up unsuccessfully trying to cheer up a bunch of cold, wet New Yorkers by flossing like your life depends on it. I'm not seeing enough movement. As far as I can tell, Ninja is just a guy who got way more famous than he ever needed to be and apart from his weird creator beefs and notoriously bizarre tweets i don't really have too strong of an opinion about him at this point in my life anyway oh dude ninja has some of the greatest tweets of all time i gotta say <laughs> it's 
He goes off sometimes. He takes over Twitter for a bit with some shit. Anyway, all of that brings us up to a few months ago, March 2022. Ninja launches his exclusive masterclass. With years of clicking and yelling now under his belt, Tyler is finally ready to share the secrets that led him to the top for the low, low price of one annual membership to masterclass.com. For the record, this is a one month class, but in order to take it, you have to be subscribed to the website for an entire year which will cost you $180. I believe that's how it works for every single masterclass. And then it unlocks all the other masterclasses. A small price to pay once you find out they have classes from both Clintons. So you already know the drill. I'm going to sign up for this class and I'm going to regret it. Full disclosure, I signed up for this already. I'm filming this intro after the fact. Can someone tell me why the fuck I bought the duo version? Did I think I was gonna be watching him on two devices at the same time? What would that even accomplish for me? So anyway, I spent $240 on this class. Most people will choose to spend a little bit less. One of the first things he gives you at the start of the class is a PDF document with all sorts of gaming and streaming lingo. I cannot overstate how helpful this glossary is. There are some extremely advanced terms on here that would have thrown me for a loop had I heard them casually used throughout one of the courses. You know, things like keyboard, <laughs> YouTube, mouse. Apparently that's the thing that you click with, but I don't know, I'm still new to this. The true beginning of this class is a section that has equipment for all different budgets, links on where to buy everything, and honestly, that's a pretty valuable resource to have all in one place. But I- It's unironically super helpful. There's also a website that's called Streamer Gear or something. I don't know if, I, I think it's pretty outdated, but I used to look at that and you could look up like a streamer you like and then their gear and it would pop up with everything they have. Yeah. So this is like Pokemane setup. She uses the Cloud Alpha, the RE20 stream deck or keyboard, which lens. I think it's somewhat up to date, but it's also, I think, fan made or not fan made, but not like from the source, you know, secondary. Are you there? I don't know. I've never checked. Am I famous? Should I be? How do I look up people? More. Ludwig Armory Gear. Ludwig's gaming and PC setup. Followed by Ludwig set build Bloodborne. <laughs> uh, that's fair. That is fair. Ludwig is a top former Twitch streamer and current YouTube streamer. Okay, this makes it seem like I fell off and not that I switched to YouTube. My pro earnings is 25k. Is that real? In what games? The only th <laughs> The only thing I have is a fucking microphone? That's it? That's the only gear they have is my Shure SM7B? My road mount is right next to it. I show my keyboard all the time. I I use the Razer mouse because it's pretty good. My PC was custom built. It's because that's all you tell us. Well, it's because I don't like my gear. My gear doesn't even work the half the time. And I feel like people buy things for bad reasons. People buy things because streamers have it and not because it's good and like the best option for your buck. Why are you upset then? I don't know, because I like being mad at things. I can't help but laugh whenever he says something like this. You only need one monitor. Uh, if you can afford more than one, then that is definitely recommended. But if you can't afford two monitors... If you can't afford a second monitor because I made you spend the cost <laughs> of one on this class... Then you know what? <laughs> That's on me. Uh, that's my bad. Sorry about that. That's kind of the irony of this whole section. I recommend that you spend a good amount of money on your gaming PC. Relative to other hobbies, streaming can be very expensive to start out. Even the True. lowest end computer that he recommends is about a thousand dollars. And you still have to buy a microphone, a webcam, a mouse, and keyboard. Two things we just learned about earlier. He really tries to stress how every dollar is so important when you're starting out. I think it's like... It probably is like 1500 I would say. 
a thousand to two thousand dollars is like what you need for everything to start. Like if, if you're starting from nothing, most people don't start with from nothing because like they need a computer for the rest of their life or maybe they have a laptop already. Like usually people don't enter like an Amish farmer trying to stream. But if you just start from nothing, it'd be like one to two K. Because, like, there's a at this point a bare minimum of quality expected in the stream audio in video if you choose. So it's like, I don't know, maybe save 180 of them for equipment and then just watch an OBS YouTube tutorial for free. Speaking of which, I love this line. It's plug and play for a reason. It may seem a little scary, but it's not. There's tutorials everywhere on the internet. Uh, Ninja, I don't know if you... I don't know if you know this, you're filming a tutorial. <laughs> don't outsource the work to someone else. Just tell me how to do these things while I'm here in the class that you're teaching. In this second clip, you will already <laughs> immediately see the evolution of my- He's not the guy though. It's alpha gaming. I'd rather Ninja call it out by name. I mean, he shouldn't just say, go find it, but alpha gaming's the go to that. Every fucking question you have... Oh, it's called Senpai Gaming now? What the hell? Anyway, every question you have, this guy has covered. Probably three times because his viewership has changed over and he can still form the same viewership from it. He probably has like four videos called The Seven Things You Need to Do Before Streaming. But it's this guy. Harris Heller. My streaming personality. What's going on guys? It's so funny to hear him describe the things that he does well in like an analytical way. Okay, here we go. See, now it's okay. We're okay. We're on a good lead. See, I'm wearing my hat. I'm clearly doing a funny voice. And obviously you probably noticed as well that I will often make silly faces. So sometimes I'll do one of these, you know, or maybe <laughs> I'll hit him with one of these. Huh? And that's just <laughs> one of those funny ass things you can do. And you know, of course it's entertaining to watch. This makes me laugh. And laugh so hard. This next clip I'm going to show you is oh. kind of me evolving <laughs> a little bit as a content creator. Hello, everybody. What, have, what do you What do you guys notice that has changed? Uh, my background has changed. I had a better chair. Okay, so evolving as a creator means buying a more expensive chair. My light setup was totally different. Way more appealing. All right. Well, I thought. Maybe he was going to talk a little bit more about like evolving your personality, but it seems like his advice is just to, you know, spend more money on the wall behind you. Hey, he's the master and this is his class. Things in the I think there's generally a theme in like trying to become a streamer where the conversation is always like, how do you upgrade everything that is not the content? Which is what led to one of the greatest clips of all time, which is the XQC six consoles. I mean, but th this is that exact argument distilled. Do the, do the stream deck, analyzer, fucking moderator stance, sound filter, six monitors, pedals, drums, um, uh, gaming guitar controllers, six consoles, ten computers, bunch of fucking wires, sound pads, speakers, antenna, satellite, dog, dog cam, cat cam, cat tree, cat this, and a bunch of dogs, dude, right? They're ready really to fucking analyze Na NASA's landing speeds, dude. Which, if we distill, is basically saying, hey, people are too focused on the setup and not the content. The background one more appealing, you know, you have the gaming fridge, of course, with the energy drinks in there. That's always fun to look at. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have a lot of fun looking at that fridge. Hey, man, we're going to go wear suits to the new Minions movie. You trying to come? No can do, big guy. I have got my day filled. Oh, wow. So if you guys enjoy the videos again, all right, if you guys like this video. That fridge is really fun to look at. I know. In the very first one, it was just my full screen webcam. The next one, I was reacting to a clip that I had. And, you know, I was wearing a hat. All right, there we go. If you want to get better at streaming, put on a hat. You know, that's probably why my friend Chris is so good at streaming. That dude has so many hats. My headphones were upgraded. The, uh, my, my hair was blue. Now we're getting somewhere. These are actionable steps. Wear a funny hat and dye your hair. Fuck. If you're like me and you're not exactly sure why that matters so much, he does actually have some pretty insightful commentary about People it. People really wanted me to always have my hair blue and it just became a part of my brand. There are a couple of categories. Oh, 
Okay, I guess that's it. Absolutely great editing there. Gotta love the cut right as he's opening his mouth to say more. I couldn't believe actually how many times he mentions his blue hair in this class. <laughs> okay, so we have Ninja blue hair, right? I dyed my hair blue and everyone thought, okay, now blue haired person, me dyeing my hair blue and the hair, the hair, my hair was blue. It's almost like he's convinced himself that one of the secrets to his success is that he dyed his hair a funny color. Well, since it seems to be such an integral part of his brand, maybe we should check in on a stream now and see how it looks. Listen, just know that I will set my alarm at 5 a.m. so I can see all of your guys' morning wood. I forgot to look at his hair. I think... <laughs> I, I, I don't know if the blue hair mattered, but I I will say I as an early soda pop and watcher, I would probably just be one of those kids in his chat five years ago that was like, make your hair pink again, <laughs> get pink hair again, go pink hair. There's iconic periods. People remember blonde wig for some. Don't know if it necessarily matters. It's also hard to got, ask a guy who's had so much success, who's been doing it for such a long period who has like their survivorship bias to ask why they're successful. Cause those reasons they're successful are things they're thinking about on hindsight, not like in the come up, you know, like surely when he dyed his hair blue, he was not like, this will make me famous, but now he is famous and his hair was blue. So he connects the dots. I think most people's maybe shouldn't experience be connected. with this class will be that it's very front loaded with content. He's got a little over an hour about the basics of what you need to just hit the go live button. And then the next section is 23 minutes long. He starts flying through these short lessons that are like, practice the game that you like. And also don't stream too much, but don't not stream too much. Good luck. He even spends <laughs> two of these very crucial minutes just rambling on about one specific dead by daylight trick he saw once. And it's like, dude, could you have written something down for this? And you, it's called like a 360. Why does it seem like half the class is him going, oh shit, what else? And then you just do it. No scopes. No scopes are cool. True. So that's true. You know, you could do one no. of those before you even have time to process anything that he said in section two. We're already breezing right into section three, which is less than 23 minutes long. It's so visibly short at first glance that they had to pad it out by copying and pasting two lessons from the previous section. Share your streams with the community and engage with each other. You know what it feels like? It feels like and this might be a problem for Masterclass in general because the target audience is everyone. The core content of something as niche as streaming appeals to no one. <laughs> it's like, if you're trying to make everyone understand it, you, you have to do such a fucking litany of 30-minute explanations on OBS, computer, mouse, bullshit. Like, if it's like a 35-year-old, 45-year-old who just got laid off and wants to stream or whatever it is, you have to explain so much more. It's too generalized. And then like a 19 year old who wants to stream will get zero value for the first half of the course. And now, um, do it again. Listen to your chat. The next time they come in, if they say something about their dog, maybe their dog isn't feeling well, and they come in the next day and you're just like, Hey Jack, what's up buddy? How's your dog, man? You probably just secured that viewer for life. Ask people if their dog is sick. He's got a section about how to deal with trolls, which is definitely something to be wary of. If okay, you know what though? Mango is the goat at this at making people feel included in chat. The way you make people feel included is you make some people included, but then you exclude others. Because if everyone is included and you call out everyone's sick dog, then no one cares. But if I say, fuck your dog, but Llama Lord, your dog I care about. Then all of a sudden Llama Lord's like, oh my God, maybe my dog is special. Like I did with Godzilla earlier. I got Godzilla for life. I believe that. It will be me and Godzilla in 2074. And if it's just us, then so be it. I still got him for life. Lock that in today. Secured it. <laughs> anyway, hope your dog's all right. If you're going to be doing anything in a live setting. I love that this is the only example of an insult that he could come up with on the spot. Uh, this is, is definitely something to be wary of if you're going to be doing anything in a live setting. I love that this... 
Hey, Jack, what's up, buddy? How's your dog, man? You probably just secured that viewer for life. Ask people if their dog is sick. He's got a section about how to deal with trolls, which is definitely something to be wary of if you're gonna be doing anything in a live setting. I love that this is the only oh, example yeah. of an insult that he could come up with on the spot. Like, uh, if someone says, hey, Ninja, your hair is uh, looking really blue today, kind of weird. I'd be Dude, I'd fucking kill myself. That would suck. Holy shit, that'd be so sad. <laughs> I'm crying. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that is kind of weird. Dude had one thing <laughs> on his mind that day. Blue hair. I really liked when he went on this <laughs> long explanation of how to ban people and specifically described each and everything to do but they never showed his screen. I mean, you can kind of see it in this shot, but uh, it's a little blurry. Oh, here, now they're gonna show it. So this user, I'm going to demonstrate how to ban and unban them. It is literally as simple as pressing two buttons. Feels like Ninja recorded for, I don't know how many hours at Masterclass Studio, and then they had all the uh, like final say in production and, and what the editing looks like and how it turns out. And, and they don't know shit. And so it, it turned out even worse. So you have their username, you click ban, Ninja, and you simply just unban. And I can't see what you're doing, buddy. This happens multiple times. It kind of makes me think that they just forgot to record his screen while he was doing this section. And instead of attempting to recreate that B-roll, they just gave up and put nothing there. It's so bad. That's not even Tyler's fault, you know, but it does show a general lack of caring from everyone involved. There are times where the crew is either pranking Tyler with the editing or they just don't give a shit. This is a real clip from the masterclass. Takis, gaming is intense, but Takis are seriously intense. And That's not the original commercial. <laughs> He doesn't shit and fart in the actual ad. Call out your regulars and loyal viewers. They'll keep coming back. Seriously intense. And That's not the original commercial. That's the greatest part. Holy shit. That's worth $180. Why are you complaining, Drew? He doesn't shit and fart in the actual ad. Call out your regulars and loyal viewers. What's hilarious is Drew could also edit these in and we'll never know because none of us will ever pay the $180 and go through the course. So... So it's totally possible that we that we could be that that we could be fake. They'll keep coming back. What up, this and how you doing, bro? Fufo, I think the tier one sub. Make sure to always talk to your chat. After all, they're your friends. Welcome back, Dick Lord. Thanks for the six months. How's your dog doing, by the way? <laughs> you don't have a. Do that actually, unironically, be really sweet if you did have a dog. You told the streamer, and they remembered, and you came back, and they asked. I feel very flattered that they had remembered a fact like that. If I'd been like my dog sick and then I come back like the next day and they're like, how's your dog? That'd be so sweet. <laughs> then get one so I can talk to you. You now have a lot of pressure on you to set good examples. It is going to be up to you to instill good morals or the morals that you have into your audience. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, not promote harassment and not promote, you know, being negative. You're trash. You're awful. You're so Stupid. You know, and just when I thought some of his advice was starting to dip in quality, he drops this banger. I have a Fortnite skin. It is no surprise that the best titles can grab potential viewers who are scrolling through channels. Yeah, so, you know, if you want to get a lot of views on a video, just get Fortnite to make you a skin and put <laughs> you in the item shop. And then... Just tell people about it. Guaranteed millions of views, dude. And it works every time. You gotta try it. Actually, uh to be fair, he's right. It also worked for uh, the Spanish streamer. What's his name? Grefk. He got 2 million viewers live for his skin. If you're able to get the skin first, come on. That's what no one's ever tried. That's the problem. Try to get the skin before you ever start streaming. A lot of the final section of this class is about these like completely unattainable things you could do to get bigger. I always expressed my personality in gaming, but wanted to break out and do other forms of media and entertainment to expand my audience. Welcome to The Daily Show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Don't just be a streamer, go on TV. I wanted to be known in Hollywood. So I went on shows like Ellen and The Tonight Show and The Masked Singer and was eventually cast in movies like Free Guy. Come on, get your name out there. Be in a movie. I know it sounds crazy, but it makes a big difference. Collaborate. He's unrelatable, probably. He's just unrelatable. 
It's like what happens to comedians when they get super rich and their whole jokes before were relatability and now they are unrelatable humans. Ninja's come up was in an era that is unreplicable. He does not know how to become a big creator starting from today because it's totally different. Becoming a big creator today is different from when I started too. Uh, and I've like recently been relearning what it takes to become a big creator today. And it's, it's so different. So it's, it, it honestly is a lot of TikTok, but yeah. Operations are a great way to get more people to your stream and it's very exciting for your viewers. <laughs> and of course you gotta play Fortnite with Drake. You may think, mm, I don't need to do that, but don't underestimate how big that could be for your career. Starting out, you might not get to game with a celebrity. But Ninja, you just said I could. Where he could have at least stuck the landing a little bit with some solid marketing tips. The branding section at the end just annoyed me because of how unspecific everything is. It's basically just a long list of Tyler's accomplishments, most of which you're probably already aware of if you spent $200 to take a Ninja class. He continually stresses the importance of branding, which I agree with, but doesn't give you any tangible steps on how to do it. And I don't expect this class to suddenly transition into a graphic design lesson, but you know, if this is Masterclass's definitive how to stream course, they could at least go into some detail about the basic stream assets that you need to make. Your okay, here's the one thing that Ninja can teach and the one thing that you can take away from his success is that generally success is being ready for a strike of lightning to hit, a, a, a lucky lightning strike. And something will happen at some point and you need to be ready by having like consistent content or, or good content, whatever it is, for when that moment comes. And then when it comes to capitalize. And I don't think there's a man who has capitalized more on the opportunity when it came. Like Ninja got the opportunity, which in this case is like being the best at Fortnite when Drake was interested in Fortnite. The opportunity, play with Drake. What he spawned from that was fucking 18 hours of streaming every day, multiple time zones to capitalize on mass amounts of viewership, peak subscriber count ever, peak viewership ever, and then taking every single opportunity to be on every show, daily show, morning show, night show, afternoon show, uh, and then also getting maximum amount of money from uh, Adidas brand sponsorship, Red Bull, Mixer.com. And so, he, like, he's extracted every single value you can get from that. Your subscriber emotes, your channel banner, your alerts, the screen that says starting soon or be right back. You know, all those things you can put in to make your stream unique to you. He barely even mentions any of those things. He's kind of just like, look at my logo. I think they're all Isn't dumb. it a cool logo? Joke's on you. It's not even my fucking logo anymore. I made a worse one. Also, why even include a section about brand deals? This is a 30-day class. No one starting a stream from scratch is worried about doing a brand deal before they've even streamed for a month. This is something that's gonna be online forever and hopefully teaching people how to become amazing professional streamers for, for decades, for a millennia to come. Yeah, dude, a thousand years from now. <laughs> A thousand <laughs> years from now, people are still going to be watching this class. <laughs> Bro, a thousand years is crazy. A thousand years is wild. Jesus was around 2,000 years ago. All right? 2,000. A thousand years ago, we're closer to Jesus than we are Ninja's master class. <laughs> but maybe, maybe, just maybe in 2,000 years... We're not going to be worried about before Christ. It will be before Ninja's Masterclass and after Ninja's Masterclass. And him rising from the dead is when he came back from Mis Mixer. <laughs> That's how he proved he was actually the son of God. Voila. I think that a good portion of the beginning of this course 
is helpful to someone who wants to start streaming and they have no idea what to do. But it's it is for very clear year. to me that not nearly enough care or attention was put into this for it to be worthy of the cost. Also, like, I don't think Ninja is just this undeniably affable guy. He's just really fucking good at Fortnite. And you can't teach someone to be as good as he is. You especially can't teach someone to be really good at a brand new game and be better than everyone else at it before they've all caught up to you. Cause that was kind of the initial wave of the early days of Fortnite for him. So to be someone who already has a net worth of like $50 million and then you charge all your most hardcore fans off the promise that maybe they'll be famous like you, it's bullshit, man, this sucks. What I did genuinely enjoy the most about this was the community aspect of it. Like I said, there's a point where Ninja kind of puts the burden on you to support each other's streams. But for the most part, people did. And that's cool because it's pretty easy to get selfish when you're starting something and you're like, you know what? That's great. I see that you're streaming. I love that for you. But could someone watch my stream? Yeah, you know what I've seen as like successful people who are trying out streaming and, and like newer to streaming is like the community that is formed. I don't even know how to describe it, but like, like, Afghans will support um, Evan Gao, will support Goon, S3K will support, like there, there's like a, like a group of people, Vale, yeah, who, who all I think like touch each other's content. That was a weird way to phrase it. <laughs> There's a big group of leeches that like to share each other's blood that they suck at the end of the day. And they all pool it together. They swim in it like Scrooge McDuck. So it was cool to see people go out of their way to compliment someone's setup or answer a question that someone had. But it's funny to me that potentially the most valuable part of the class is the one part that Ninja has no involvement in. There's so many cool people taking this class with all different kinds of content. I saw a Lego building stream. I saw a couple that streams at Disneyland. But my favorite streamer by far was this kid, Plushy Orca. If we don't get this dub, I'll eat a spoonful of mayonnaise. No spoonful of mayonnaise for me. Tell me that that's not the most badass clip you've ever seen. To their credit, the class does have its own TA that goes around, you know, interacting with people's posts, but it's never anything super specific to that person. What's your favorite piece of decor? What's your favorite conversation piece? What's your favorite piece or prop? Are you working on building connections in other communities? Are you working on building connections in other communities? Tom, are you building connections? Let's go. Anything else? Anything else? Anything else? And before you ask, the TA is not Ninja himself. Not that Obviously. I would expect him to be, although it would be really funny if he was commenting on these in third person. No, the TA is a mysterious and unknown entity. One who's really only there to make the community section seem more valuable than it actually is. The one silver lining with this course, if you spent almost $200 and you got to this point and you're like, that's it? Is that you're still able to watch a shit ton of content on Masterclass. It's just a matter of whether that's something that actually has value to you. Because it I might mean, that's not. The you might have noticed scam. Marquez Brownlee just launched his- Masterclass's big scam is that every time a creator does a course for it, you have to sign up for every fucking course they have and they package the cost in. That way, they are never punished if a creator's course does poorly because they're all banded together. So you're buying their library of work, not just one course. For the same reason you can't pay 50 cents a month to just watch Stranger Things on Netflix. His own course about video creating and posting and I feel like this class is just so much beefier than the one I just watched. He has a 21 minute video entirely Curiosity dedicated stream, to Nebula. lenses. Yeah. If you've ever watched his content, you know that he's extremely tech savvy and he also has a much more natural teaching cadence with the way he lays out information. Whereas Tyler, I assume, was just riffing things off the top of his head, which is probably why he constantly trailed off into silence. Streaming just gave me the platform to, and I, and I think that's how, you know, um, but I mean, my recommendation is, but you know what? It they did him so dirty with the edit. <laughs> that was such a shit job. 
Holy fuck, they don't care at all. It's not fair of me to just sit here and criticize Ninja without taking his tips and tricks into the real world. So for the next three weeks, I will be following his advice to a T as I create my own Twitch channel and try to build it from the ground up with no promotion whatsoever. Obviously, I don't want this Twitch account to link back to me in any way. If someone finds my channel, I want it to be entirely organic. So I'm going to try to create a persona that's both generic and yet still true to my own brand. I can't believe that name wasn't already taken. After some light branding and a little bit of finagling on OBS, I hit start on my very first stream ever. And I forgot to enable VODs beforehand, so there is no record of it. And of course I have... That's a Twitch thing. New Twitch thing. It's cringe. Had one of the most insane Fortnite wins I've ever had. I somehow escaped so many near-death experiences and made it all the way to the end. And then I won because the last player left just died. I didn't shoot him. I didn't see him. He must have just walked into the storm, I guess, because I won without doing anything and you can't even see my reaction to it. Once I realized that I had nothing important to do for the rest of the day until my wife came home in a couple hours, I went live for another first stream. This time I had old school RuneScape open while- I Fucking knew he was a RuneScape head. While I spent eight minutes trying to figure out how to get a chat overlay on stream. If you're wondering, I learned how to do that from a free YouTube video not the class that I paid for. But right as I was settled in and satisfied with my work, the unexpected happened. He wrote in his own chat, what's up, birch poopy wearing diaper, eh? Caught you. Someone showed up. The possibility of this happening was so minuscule in my mind that I was not prepared for this at all. I actually almost panicked and ended stream. What if I panicked and ended stream? But I stayed on for a few minutes and had a short conversation with her. She told me she plays RuneScape 2 and was literally just scrolling through the OSRS tab on Twitter. Yeah, everyone does that. The category is so small. Small categories like that, if you really love a game, people just do that all the time. RuneScape has 776 viewers, and they're all small streamers, and people who just love RuneScape scroll it. I guess this is... I do it all the time with uh, speedrun games. I'll just browse Mario 64. And, like, if no one that I like who's speedrunning Mario 64 is on, I'll watch someone else. I usually like 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 this guy. I'll watch this guy, because his speedrun time is around my speedrun time, and I like watching people who are at my skill level. Wrong game? Yeah, my bad. That's cool. Bigger category. Same idea, though. Twitch, and she clicked on my stream because my name was Scoliosis King. So one point for my awesome branding. What a great day. But obviously, I still wasn't satisfied. So before my third stream, branding. I did a little bit of work to make the viewer experience better. I put the Finding Nemo DVD menu on the TV in this stock photo I found. I made a couple playlists for different moods I might find myself in. And then I started stream with my microphone off for two minutes. You know, and that's the thing about going live in front of zero viewers. There's no Mistakes, no pressure, no one to tell you that your audio levels are terrible. Oopsies. For stream number four, I made sure to test the audio levels beforehand, so that was good to go. And then I put on a hat. I guess you could say <laughs> I was learning. Even though no one technically watched the stream or you know, even tuned in at any point, um, I felt good about my growth as a streamer. Streaming a zero of yours is so hard. It's so hard because you're talking to no one. And even if there is one person watching and chatting, it feels so much different. It is the same thing. I am in my room by myself looking at a screen. It would be no different if I were to close chat, you know, and imagine I had zero viewers. But when you actually have zero viewers, it's so much different. I was kicking ass in the game. No that's why I feel like you should take the bold step, which can be embarrassing to tell your friends and family about it. But I always say like, if you're, if you're, if you're trying to subject other people to your stream and you're too, but you're too embarrassed to show your friends and family, then like fucking, I mean, maybe not your family. Cause whatever they're boomers. They don't understand. But if you're too embarrassed to show your friends then who love you, then why the fuck are you going to make us watch it? I know it's embarrassing, but like, if you're too embarrassed for your fucking friend who you love and who loves you to tell them you have a stream, you're going to make me watch it? I don't like you. I don't even know you. It would be absurd.
to expect me to care when you when you think they won't care. And so I think getting over that hump of embarrassment is key. And usually people who make like different Twitter accounts with the express goal of like hiding their identity so none of their friends or family know will always fail. They'll just be big, big, big failures as streamers. No spoonful of mayonnaise for me. I was being relatable. Y'all ever drink water before? I felt like if I just stuck to it, things would turn around eventually. And then my next stream took all the wind out of my sails. It was a combination of things. I was doing one of my least favorite Slayer tasks in RuneScape, a game I've already been getting kind of bored of lately. I am bored of this game. I was really tired that day and the repetitiveness of what I was doing certainly didn't help. When there's no one there to bounce energy off of, it's really hard to maintain energy. And you feel like you should the whole time just in case someone pops in and you have like two seconds to lure them in and you never know when it's gonna be. So you have to always be ready. Thank you so much to everybody who watched today which from the looks of it was nobody but even at this point i tried to stay optimistic and keep focusing on improving the quality of my stream i thought i had a pretty funny idea for the alert that would play whenever i got a new follower or subscriber the thing is like that doesn't matter if no one's doing either of those things. So I took matters into my own hands by blowing the dust off the stream deck that I bought in 2020 and never opened. With this device, I could repurpose all of the sound effects I've saved on my computer over the years, including this fart compilation that I forgot was over a minute long. <laughs> For my seventh attempt, I put everything that I had learned thus far together and had what I think was my best stream yet. Thanks for jumping out of the bush so I could see where you were, dude. I was energetic. I was being a little goofball. Just being a goofball. I was making wacky faces left and right just like the master himself. But yet again, I looked over and no one was there to watch. It was frustrating to feel like I was finally starting to hit my stride creatively, but it wasn't making a difference because no one was finding my stream. At this point, I had utilized just about every tip that Ninja had given me and then some, and still it wasn't working. I knew that something drastic had to change, but what? <laughs> Okay, obviously irrelevant, obviously. But I'm pretty sure the course has a key community section where people taking the course, like he talked about, can post about their streams. And if he had done that, then he would have had a insane boost in viewers because he's Drew Gooden. They would have recognized he's Drew Gooden but because the, he's Drew Gooden, he nerfed himself, but yeah. My crazy hair, my crazy blue hair. Blue hair, blue haired person. My recommendation is dyeing my hair blue. Oh. He said no promo. Yeah, I know. But because you can't do promo, you will never grow on Twitch. I'm not seeing it. Blue. 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 Oh. It looks great. I, I hate that. I could have like just it. bought a wig. Too late. Didn't think about that in time. So at this point, you're probably wondering, Drew, did you really spend four hours in a hair salon just because Ninja mentioned his hair a few times? And also, did you have to download Instacart this week because you're too embarrassed to go to the grocery store? Yes to both. But the reason I dyed my hair is because I had something crazy in mind for the culmination of I think my it was journey. Great. I was going to do a 24 hour stream. This Good was idea. a big leap for me. Up until this point, I had only streamed for like an hour or two at a time just to dip my toes in the pool. And now I was going to jump upside down into the ocean. So with my wife away for the weekend and my hair the color of toothpaste, around 12.30 p.m. on Saturday, I began what I assumed would be the most successful night of my Twitch career. I was wrong. I got off to a pretty hot start, honestly. I was feeling good. Turns out the beginning of a 24 hour stream is the same as a regular stream because you haven't done the 24 hour part yet. Really, this is no different than what I normally do. I'm just playing video games. I have never done a 24 hour stream ever, ever. They're so fucking hard. And usually, unless you are a psychopath like XQC or Trainwrex, who somehow get like a second burst of ener energy. I, I mean where I'm awake the whole time. I've done 24 hour streams where I sleep all the time. But usually when you do a 24 hour stream and you're awake the whole time, the quality is worse than if you were to do two 12 hour streams over two days and the viewership is worse. 
No one's watching me. I'm talking out loud to myself. Well, I shouldn't say no one is watching. There was a point early on where a spam bot came in and advertised something. Sure would be great if they showed Ninja's screen during that lesson on how to ban someone from your chat because then I would know how to do it. It was several hours before any real person joined. It was my follower, Samantha. Um, she didn't like my hair, so that's not good. Now, before all this, I had recently begun a pretty regimented meal plan, and I didn't want to lose all my progress just because of this video. So I made sure to use sound alerts to build reminders into the stream. It's a fun surprise happened about three and a half hours into the stream. A new viewer showed up. I got a new person. Welcome in. I've streamed so many times. I've only had one chatter. Uh, I was confused by his message, though. He said 24 hours. Really? Like he doesn't believe that I could do it. You don't know anything about me, dude. You don't know what kind of resolve I have. Then he told me that I look really bored and that I should chew on something. You know, it's not my fault that I have resting bored face. Cause my face does this. That was his final message in the chat. He never came back. When four o'clock rolled around, it was- I'm gonna say it. It seemed like a boring fucking stream. I, 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 I look, I just don't think they're the right games for Drew. I, it just feel like- It's time for my yogurt. The greatest parts of the 24 hour stream are the 15 second it's yogurt time cuts. And it was around this time when the cracks were starting to form. The regret that I felt from blowing it with Chucky earlier was really sending me on a downward spiral. I started listening to Doodle Bop songs. I took multiple Doodle Bops quizzes. I found out I was Rooney. Six hours in, I made me as Ninja on The Sims. And I designed him a beautiful house with no privacy except for one curtain by the kitchen toilet. He also had a basement stream room filled with trees and portraits of mm, faraway for landscapes, oxygen. places he couldn't go to because he was on house arrest for tax evasion. I forgot that I accidentally made him really mean though, so every time he tried to talk to someone, it would turn contentious immediately. The only thing he ever wanted to do with them was get into a fist fight. I figured he was just lonely and didn't know how to express himself, so I put in an online order of a cat. A guy from the adoption agency brought him out. Is that called, called Cringer? Press himself, so I put in an online order. <laughs> Why is a cat called Cringer? <laughs> Order of a cat. A guy from the adoption agency brought him out to me and I got him confused with a different cat that I spent the next two hours talking to. So the guy took the cat that I was supposed to adopt and the cat that I was talking to walked off my lot and I never saw him again. So that was when I stopped playing The Sims. A third of the way there, my one follower, Samantha, suggested GeoGuessr, and this was perfect Ooh. for the state of mind that I was in. A few weeks ago, I was watching this guy, Banthony, refuse to end his stream until he hit a state streak on GeoGuessr of 100. It ended up taking him 150 hours to do it, but when he finally did, it was one of the greatest moments I've ever seen on Twitch. I can't look, I can't look, I can't look, I can't look. Yes! 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 That's yes. sick. Not to brag or anything, but I'm pretty good at GeoGuessr 2. My state streak is five. At this point, my focus was solely on March. He's probably dog shit. Marching forward. No one else had popped in at all, so I was just trying to kill time. I got over two hours out of Roller Coaster Tycoon. I even beat one of the hardest scenarios in the game without breaking a sweat. I am a gamer god. Why is no one here to appreciate it? Around 4 a.m., I was- No, not Banthony, him. Starting to get a little tired. So I began a new playthrough of Wolfenstein 2 on the hardest difficulty? This is how you blow down, Nazi. <laughs> all things considered, went all right for a bit um, until I hit what proved to be an impenetrable wall. So I mumbled something incoherent, exited out of the game, and went on a short break of three hours and 42 minutes. I didn't go to sleep and I don't want to go back to sleep or go. I don't want to go to sleep for the first time. I guess I thought about it and I was like, no one even knows that I'm here. If I go to sleep right now, it's not like anyone will say, Drew, hey, 
buddy, wake up, you gotta finish your stream. They wouldn't say anything because no one even knows that I'm doing this. As I drifted off to sleep on my couch that's not quite long enough to hold a human-sized man, I started to have crazy dreams. The viewer count was climbing fast. A hundred, a thousand, ten thousand people all here to cheer me on and say pog and whatever keck w means. I got to show them the game I invented that had a perfect score on Metacritic. It was Harry Potter themed. I don't know how I got the rights to that. Everybody applauded my effort and congratulated me on a job well done. And then three hours later I woke up and no one was there. Obviously. If people weren't joining the stream before, they weren't going to pop in now and wait an indefinite amount of time for me to return from my hiatus. At this point, the stream was just a Spotify playlist gone rogue and my Be Right Back screen that I was probably using a little inaccurately. But I went and grabbed my cold brew from yesterday out of the fridge and popped on some GeoGuessr while I slowly woke myself up. Oh no. It transported me back to the past. I gotta find Doc. Even in this mental state, I managed to reach a new record-breaking state streak. That's right, six. Time Woo! was melting away, and as the sun moved further and further towards the center of the sky, I knew that the prison sentence I had forced upon myself would soon be complete. With about 90 minutes left of stream, I decided that I would get a Fortnite dub right as time expired. A lofty goal, I know, but I was up for the challenge. How and the just hell are there that many minis? Fire. A lofty goal, I know, but I was up for the challenge. Just kidding. This is some of the worst Fortnite I've ever played in my life. Turns out video games are way harder when your brain doesn't work. With a little under 30 minutes left, my boy Eddie popped in, and it was a Eddie. glorious moment. Four years ago, my Twitch career began alongside him, and even though I follow that up with roughly a 1,500-day break, it felt so poetic to be right back where I started. And during our second of two games together, he died because he went to ping an enemy and his controller made him take a selfie. But not even yet another quick loss could bring me down at this point. I was so close to being done. Who gives a shit? Fuck this stupid game. When it was time to get my dub right as the clock hit 24, I realized that wasn't going to happen. So instead I jumped off a cliff and lived. The stream is over. I Spoke never so have to do this again. I'm never going to do this again. Fuck you, Ninja. So let's recap. I streamed for about 40 hours on this account, and during that time, roughly 25 people came in at different points, but almost none of them stayed for more than a few seconds. Three people actually typed a message in the chat, but one of them was a bot. After as many of you know, today my friend Drew Gooden uploaded a video in which it appears toward the end that I'm in a Fortnite lobby with him. I wanted to come here and say that's not true. It's a lie. I would never play that baby game because it's for babies, and I am not a baby. Drew mentioned where I got killed because I took a selfie instead of shooting. This made me laugh so hard it hurt because I'm far too good at video games for that to ever happen. Even if I play Fortnite, which I don't, I probably wouldn't be good at it. Probably the best. I'd probably be very good at it. I'm not sure why Drew would have done this, but he'll be hearing from my lawyer soon. I like to hear everything about peace and love on my page. I just want to start off by saying I forgive you, Drew. I forgive you being a fucking liar. I hope nothing bad happens to you. After spending $150 to dye my hair and delivering 24 straight hours of high octane content, except when I fell asleep, I grew all the way from one follower to one I still have one follow. Big shout out. Except when I die. actually for about four. Dude, I never have to do this again. I'm never going to do this again. Fuck you, Ninja. So let's recap. I streamed for about 40 hours on this account, and during that time, roughly 25 people came in at different points, but almost none of them stayed for more than a few seconds. Three people actually typed a message in the chat, but one of them was a bot. But after spending $150 to dye my hair and delivering 24 straight hours of high octane content, except when I fell asleep, I grew all the way from one follower to one I still have one fault. Big shout out to Samantha. You were there from the beginning. It is interesting that he played old school RuneScape, had someone come in who said I scrolled through and found you here, and then thought, yeah, I'll play Fortnite. <laughs> I want to go to something a little bigger, okay? I want people to scroll a little bit longer before they find me because they'll be so exhausted, exhausted from scrolling that they'll want to stay. They won't ever want to scroll again. 
They discovered what a mouse is. They've been scrolling it for years to find me down there. You were the only one there at any point. So even though things didn't exactly work out for me, um, I don't think Ninja's class is entirely useless. He taught me how to set up OBS. Everything else, like all of the specific overlays I wanted to do, using the stream deck for sound effects and scene changes, I fucking Googled all that. And it was free! There are a handful of people on Masterclass who don't speak much publicly, so if you're like a massive fan of them, it would probably be worth it to hear Mariah Carey, for instance, talk about singing. I'm not trying to learn how to sing, but it'd probably be pretty cool to hear her talk about it, you know? But even if you are the world's Biggest ninja fan, I promise you, you have not run out of ninja content to watch. He's probably streaming right now. And if you want to learn how he streams, pay attention to what he does and take notes. That's it. He's good at his job. He's been doing this for a long time. I think an aspiring streamer could learn a lot just from watching him. But you don't need to pay him $180 to tell you, you know, yeah, sometimes I talk in a funny voice. Out of all the jobs on Masterclass, his is the most publicly available. Like, I can't just walk into a kitchen and look over a chef's shoulder to see how they made some. I don't know the process of writing poetry just because I read a finished poem. I don't know what goes into getting a series picked up just because because I watched the show. There are plenty of classes on here where that kind of inside look is something that's unique and valuable. But Ninja is showing you how to do his job every time he does his job. Because that's part of the job. You can't stream if you're not showing people. I lost my mind. My hair is blue and I lost my mind. I'm gonna take a walk. Uh, babe, there's a guy in our kitchen? Don't worry, it's just me. And I'm here to cook today's sponsor, HelloFresh. Having food delivered straight to your door is one of life's greatest luxuries, especially when your hair glows in the dark. Here's the thing, if I'm not looking in a mirror, I forget about this. I can't see the top of my this head from ad. this angle, so- I feel bad because I watched 35 minutes of his content, so I don't think I'll watch, I don't think I'll skip the ad, because I think that'd be rude. Because we watched the rest of it. But this is an ad for HelloFresh. Which got in some heat because they're very anti-union. They also made a spinoff called Factor. Which I eat, full disclosure. I'm not sponsored by them. But the meals are yummy. And I don't have to cook it. I don't get HelloFresh really. Unless you're trying to learn to cook. Just get Factor if you just want a meal that's healthy. It's quicker. But... I forget that I look like if a cupcake came to life. I had a neon billboard painted onto my scalp demanding that everybody- And Atriox still supports them? Wait till you find out who owns Twitch. <laughs> the, uh, hey, woo! Gonna blow your mind. Stare at me and I don't like to be perceived. So HelloFresh is good for that. The reason I've been subscribed to HelloFresh for years before this though is because of how much structure it adds to my life. When left to my own devices, I will often eat the worst and possibly most expensive food I can imagine because I waited too long to plan a meal and now I'm too hungry to think clearly. But every day that I have one of these bags in my fridge, I don't have to resort to that. My brain can stay on Dumbo mode and I can still have a fun and tasty meal. There's so much variety on their menu and they're constantly adding new stuff. I'm talking meatballs, fish, burgers, chickpea fritters, buffalo pork chops. They've got a bunch of vegetarian and kid-friendly meals. They've got lunches you can make in 10 minutes, dinners you can make in 20, and they even have little cheesecakes. Anything you could possibly be in the mood for, they probably have it. And not only does HelloFresh help me save time grocery shopping, it also helps me cut down on food waste. Their supply chain is more streamlined compared to traditional grocery shopping, which helps reduce greenhouse gas emissions, according to a University of Michigan study. And on top of that, I'm about to save you so much freaking money. If you go to HelloFresh.com and use my promo code I'm a little stinker 16 you can get up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Surprise, I'm in the box. Imagine. No, I don't actually know what the surprises are. They won't tell me. They said I haven't earned their trust yet. Again, that's code I'm a little stinker 16 Link in description. Hey, so does like anyone know when blue hair goes away? Yeah, it's slightly more expensive than grocery shopping. But I, dude, I've been trying to. Sh I went to the grocery store. I, I get. I don't. I don't know, man. I'm 27, but I get so stressed out when I'm in there. I forget immediately what I'm shopping for, 
And then when I find what I'm shopping for, the options are unlimited. So there's so many different things. I went to the grocery store the other day just to get flowers for Cutie. That was it. It was a small task. I just wanted a little grocery store flower thing. I was there for 45 minutes. You know how unbelievable it is when your girlfriend texts you, hey, where have you been? And you say, buying flowers for you, honey. But I was just stressed out because some had cute cases. It, some didn't fit in my vest because they were too big. She doesn't like certain flowers. So it's hard. Uh Northern Lions go to that shopping. Yeah, he's 37, okay? I grow 10 more years older and get that many more colonoscopies. I'm going to know my way around a goddamn foreign food store or aisle at my nearest Safeway. Anyway, uh, I had an idea, which I think I'll do, but I made a video a uh, year and a half ago called How to Watch This Before Becoming a Streamer. I think it's good video. I think it holds up. But the game has changed, so there's new information. TikTok, YouTube shorts are uh, are insane now. And, uh, and so I'm thinking about remaking it, but in a masterclass style. And by that, I mean just fancy lighting. That's pretty much it. Uh, so I think I'm going to do that at some point before the end of the year. With some new info. How much for free.